Through a massive effort lasting five years, more than 9.6 million poverty-stricken people were relocated to new settlements with better housing and living conditions. However, this was only a first step. If poverty alleviation through relocation was to be truly successful, more needed to be done. Only by developing industries and providing education and health care could poverty be rooted out once and for all. Yu Yuan Long, where Yang Chong now lives with his family, is the largest ecological migrant village in Yongning County, Ningxia. More than 10,000 migrants from 14 villages in Guyuan have been resettled here. Yang Chong's old home was in a mountainous area of southern Ningxia that's notorious for its arid climate, ecological fragility, inconvenient transport, frequent natural disasters, and serious soil erosion. In 1972, the United Nations listed it as one of the most unsuitable places for human habitation. <laughs> In 1996, the state proposed an East-West Cooperation Program. Thirteen developed provinces and cities on the East Coast would help ten underdeveloped Western regions. Ningxia was partnered with Fujian, and the main battleground would be Shihaigu. In 1997, Xi Jinping, then Deputy Secretary of the Fujian Provincial Party Committee, came in person to inspect the mountainous areas of southern Ningxia. He found that due to the adverse natural conditions in Shihaigu, the land was unable to support its people. This meant it was caught in a trap. Whatever assistance might be given, the area would return to poverty once that assistance was withdrawn. So she proposed relocating the poverty-stricken residents of Shihaigu en masse to somewhere that could be irrigated by the Yellow River. The chosen resettlement site was in an area of desert near the Holon Mountains, 50 kilometers south of the city of Yinchuan. She himself chose the name Minying. So it was that Ningxia blazed a trail for poverty alleviation through relocation. Xia Xingchang and five other villagers from Qi Hai Gu became Minyong's first group of settlers. They built irrigation works, laid out the land, and diverted water from the Yellow River into the desert. From the initial six families, Minyung's population quickly grew to more than 8,000 migrants from Shihaigu, but moving there was only a first step. The key to the long-term success of the resettlement would be the follow-up efforts to help people support themselves. Once again, Fujian provided assistance. 
，有福建的专家技术教授员工亲自带领他们打蘑菇、建蘑菇棚，给我们就手帮手的给我拉上，搬到这里以后，我们的老百姓都面向成一个什么挣钱的工人。Over the next four years, more and more people moved to the new settlement from the mountains. Minyong village became Minyong town, with a population of 60,000. Along with the migrants came business people from Fujian. Chen Datsi was one of them. He arrived in 2007, and within 15 minutes, he had decided to stay. Why From plowing the soil and erecting windbreaks to planting the grapevines, the work was hard, but it paid off. Within a few years, Chen Da Qi's Minyong wine was making its mark internationally. Moreover, his organic grape industrial park was providing jobs for more than 3,000 local people. Most of Chen Dongqi's employees, like Yang Chong and his family, come from Yuanlong village. Having a stable job has not only helped them leave poverty behind, more importantly, it has also given them confidence. In Mingning today, the red-tiled, white-walled houses are surrounded by green trees. Raspberries, grapes, and goji berries grow in great abundance. Dairy and beef farming is supported by modern equipment. By the end of 2019, per capita disposable income in Minying reached just under 14,000 yuan, a 27-fold increase from the start of the relocation in 1996. The incidence of poverty has fallen from nearly 90% in 1997 to zero. But relocation not only solves current problems, it also has a profound impact on the future. The departure of millions of migrants made it possible to return old farmland to forest. Once barren land has turned green again. On July the 19th, 2016, Xi Jinping visited Yuanlong village in Minying. As a representative of the migrants, Xia Xingchong talked to the president. It was the opportunity he'd been waiting for ever since the groundbreaking for Minying village 19 years before. The original launch of the migration project in Ningxia set a precedent for poverty alleviation relocation during the 13th five-year plan period. Relocation is a complex undertaking. It concerns the vital interest of tens of millions of people 
and involves the development of tens of thousands of resettlement communities. It's a major test for the local governments in the places where the migrants are moving from and to. The singing comes from the Qinglongchuan community in the Yunyong district of Xiyang in Hubei province. In 2018, people moved here from 18 mountain towns. Since then, these cultural events have been organized regularly as a way of encouraging people to get to know one another. Eighty percent of Yunyong is mountainous. Arable land and water account for just 10% and 4% of its territory. In the past, the tiny number of inhabitants were wholly dependent on the weather for their livelihood. Farming was very difficult. The only way to escape the poverty was by moving away. But relocation isn't only about improving living conditions. More importantly, it must lead to sustainable development. However, there was very little scope in Yunyong for finding resettlement locations that could support industries and generate employment. Eventually, the local government decided on a central site. It created Qinglongchuang Community and moved over 15,000 people from 18 towns in Yunyong there. The new residents were both excited and anxious about the future. <laughs> We the successful resettlement of migrants depends on creating industries that generate jobs. Local official Wei Yinwu visited an enterprise in the community to discuss the employment situation. This company provides jobs for more than 1,500 relocated people. But there was a problem. Wei Yinwu learned that the local kindergarten and elementary school day ended at 4.30, while the employees were still at work. They wanted the community to run a classroom from 4.30 to solve the problem. And so, Qinglongchuan community opened a 4.30 classroom. Chen has been working at the factory since being resettled in 2018. Back when they were living in the mountain village, young people like Chen Xian were tempted to move away. After being resettled, she found work in a factory in the community, while her husband, Wang Qingfeng, cultivates mushrooms. 
Life for the family is happy and stable. Early in the morning, Wang Qingfeng is going to install mush bags in his two greenhouses. The party secretary and technicians come to help. Yunyang has abundant forest resources, a humid climate, and good potential for growing crops. Using the enterprise plus base plus farmers model, Qinglongqian has established a 77 hectare mushroom demonstration base. The community has more than 500 households and 1,500 relocated people who, like Wang Qingfeng, have escaped poverty by cultivating mushrooms. Living in peace and working in contentment is the Chinese definition of a happy life. Such is the life enjoyed by Qinglongqian community's 8,000 strong permanent population. The children singing in the kindergarten, the roar of the weaving machines at the factory, the clatter of pots and pans in the new houses, and the chatter from the mushroom sheds. These are the sound made by people who are happy after escaping poverty. Qin Fu Qing was assigned to Jiao Jiao Hua village as its first secretary in 2016. In September the following year, the entire village was relocated. With support from Qin and his team, they set up the Zhao Jiu Hua workshop in their new home, Wang Hui Yuan community. Uh,
People still seek out Qin Fu Qing, just as they did in their old home. Wang Sanyu's family was the most vulnerable in Jiaojiawa village. After her husband and son died of illness, her daughter-in-law ran away, leaving behind her two mentally handicapped children. It has been a struggle for Wang to support the family. Chen Fuqing and his team have been taking special care of them. Jiaojiawa lay deep among the Liuliang Mountains. There was only one well for the whole village. If they used the water for drinking, there'd be none left for irrigation. Surrounded by mountains, there was no possibility of building roads. The land yielded little, and the people were poor. If poverty was to be rooted out once and for all, there was only one solution, relocation. However, abandoning one's home is always a wrench. The elderly said that although the land was barren, they could still make ends meet. The poverty alleviation team realized it would take a lot of work to persuade them of the benefits of relocation. September the 22nd, 2017, was the day of Jiao Jiaowa Village's relocation. The elderly bid farewell to their old homes.
The villagers' new home was Wonghui Yuan Migration New District in Kelong County. There, they would go through the transition from rural to urban life, from poor farmers to urban residents. The process was most difficult for the older people. Qin Fuqing knew that the critical period would come immediately after the move. The poverty alleviation team would need to be on hand to help the villagers adapt. Liu Fu Yu saw that a lot of people were finding jobs in nearby factories and workshops. This made him anxious. Despite his age, he felt he could still work. So he sought out Jin Fu Qin. Young Uzu couldn't rest after her husband became a sanitation worker. So Young Uzi takes her new job very seriously. Chen Fu Qing knows the elderly want to work. It's not just a matter of earning money. It's also because they want to integrate into city life. Life is going well for Wang Sanyu, but she still has a concern. So, the Kolong People's Congress contacted a special education school in Xinzhou City. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
After living in poverty deep among the mountains for generations, they are now enjoying better production and living conditions, an improved infrastructure, and basic public services. They have embraced a modern lifestyle and have embarked on the road to personal prosperity. Developing industries based on their own unique ethnic identities is a pragmatic approach to alleviating poverty. Huju County in Haidong, Qinghai Province is the only two autonomous county in the country. It's here that a village called Banyin has been moved. On August the 23rd, 2016, Xi Jinping came to inspect the progress of the relocation. The village was experimenting with a new development path based on rural tourism. <laughs> The Tuo are one of China's least populous ethnic groups. By tradition, they revere rainbows. So this place is called the Home of the Rainbow. However, the harsh natural environment in the Luopan Mountains and the limited potential for development meant poverty cast a dark shadow over the villagers. In 2015, 129 families were still living at the top of a mountain called Shago. In 2016, 129 households with 484 people were moved from Mount Shago to a new settlement beside a road. The new Banyan village set about building its own unique industry. <laughs> The location next to the provincial highway makes transport convenient. Having identified a number of scenic spots within a 10-kilometer radius, the villagers came up with the idea of developing rural tourism. They built farmhouse hostels and also launched a number of businesses rooted in their ethnic traditions. Liu Yujin saw an opportunity to expand his small distillery. Ming Liu is a highland barley liquor that's unique to the Tuo people. After 24 hours, the Highland barley is transformed into a sweet mash. This is poured into a tank and kept at room temperature to continue the fermentation process. After 30 days, the fermented Highland barley is steamed for an hour and a half over a low heat. The liquid, when fully distilled, is clear and fragrant, Ming Liu liquor. <laughs> Visitors to Banyan village flock to Liu Yujin's distillery. His Ming Liu liquor has become famous. The Tua people are also famous for their Pan Shu embroidery. Zhang Zhuo Ma Shi Jia is in charge of this business. When I was 
Zhang lived on Mount Shaogo for nearly 30 years, completely unaware of Pan Shu embroidery's potential for making money. When times were particularly tough, she even sold her embroidered wedding gown made by her mother. The Tua people's Pan Shu embroidery is now listed as part of the nation's intangible cultural heritage. Their products include more than 500 different costumes and items of jewelry. At 54, Zhang Zhuo Ma Shi Zhi has been named an inheritor of Pan Shu. Living in the new settlement has broadened people's horizons. They are using their traditional culture to develop a thriving tourism industry. In little more than three years, they have turned their backs on poverty. The road ahead is now broader than ever. Under the 13th five-year plan, from 2016 to 2020, total investment in poverty alleviation relocation exceeded one trillion yuan. Part of it was focused on stimulating the development of industries in poverty-stricken areas. By relocating people to places that supported industries and industrial parks, it was possible to achieve the integration of production and urban development. Yang Hui Li used to live among the mountains of Hui Shui County in Guizhou Province. The isolation was a major impediment to her education. The place they were living was virtually uninhabitable, so the young adults left to earn a living. Only the elderly and children stayed behind. Yang Hui Li desperately missed her mother. Zhao家的话，就从小见到爸爸妈妈，然后都很想他们，但是我奶奶那个手机有时候就没有花费嘛，就打不到电话。以前小时候嘛，我就跟我妹妹他们就打了一个那个秘密基地嘛，我就会到
1.5 million of them were registered as poverty-stricken. Yang Hui Li's family settled in Qingming community in Hui Shui County in 2017. She started at a new school, and her parents found new jobs. The family was finally back together. From the school to the school, it was a short time, about 10 minutes to the school. My mom and dad were working in the middle of the school. They could help us, but they could also help us. It was great. The school was very good. The government spent 120 million yuan on building Huimin Primary School. Education is the key to halting the transmission of poverty from one generation to the next. Moving out of the mountains is life-changing. In particular, it gives the children a broader vision so that they can make plans for the future. In the poverty-stricken areas, relocation has improved every aspect of life, including education, health care and culture, and brought about a substantial improvement in public services. Lack of access to water, education and medical care is now a thing of the past. After relocation, the average distances to the nearest primary school, clinic and township health center have been drastically reduced. <笑>换一个地方也换一个世界一样 Over the past five years, new houses and communities have sprung up. The relocated people now have access to housing and education, medical care, and social security. The smiling faces tell of the happiness of a new life achieved after years of hardship. Relocation has moved millions of people out of poverty. More than this, it has given rise to new industries and lifestyles, to an urban-rural realignment, and to a transformation of social relations. In short, relocation is a striking example of how China has guided some of its poorest residents along the road out of poverty and towards prosperity. <laughs>